Hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I wanted to revisit one of my favorite games from the last few years. It's mine. This is a card game for two players, a drafting style game in which you are going to be playing thieves to different locations, swapping hands after every card play, and then also playing gear to those thieves in order to control the location, score victory points, things like that. The reason I'm talking about this today, and by the way, I've done a review of this already, is because this game has just been reprinted by Keymaster Games as Caper. These two games are largely the same game. And It's Mine was sort of hard to find, so it's been one that uh, not a lot of people have heard about. It's perhaps a little harder to get your hands on a copy. But now, at least if you are in the US, you should be able to get a copy of Caper and enjoy the fantastic gameplay in the original game. If you, uh, I'm gonna go ahead in this video and do a sort of comparison video of the two, uh, showing you what's, uh, you know, the components and how they translate from one version to the other. What's in this one that's not in the new printing? What's in the new printing that's not in the original? But I'm not going to be explaining how the game works or even necessarily telling you what I think about it overall. You should go watch my review of the original, it's mine for that. But spoiler alert, as I said, I really like the game and I think it's just a fantastic card game for two. The new one, basically the same game. So I'll just echo that here. It's a fantastic game. You should definitely get your hands on it. But let's go ahead and go to the table. I'll show you what's in both. And when I come back up here, I'll tell you a little bit about how I feel uh, regarding some of the changes made to the new printing of the game. Here we have the two boxes side by side for a size comparison, as well as, of course, your first look at the artwork in each of the two. I'm always going to be showing you the components for It's Mine on this side, right next to Caper on this side here. So there you go. Those are the boxes, both fairly small boxes, though very much uh, different shapes. But let's go ahead and dive in and see what you get inside each of them. Here are the round markers from each of the versions. You have down here the coins, uh, so they are largely similar. Of course, the new ones with different artwork on both sides and slightly larger than the original coins here. And then as I said, the round marker here, you are going to be using the tokens to mark what round you are on in the game. So you have the small cube for that. Over here, you have a custom made little meeple for that that is, uh, based on the logo for the game, Caper. And you're gonna be putting that over here and moving it along as you take turns. One of the main gameplay differences of note that you can see right now is that in the original game, the players represented by these tokens here, and there's no equivalent for that in the new printing, they would uh, not always alternate beginning the round. So it, was, it would be the player playing the white token would take the first round, they would begin that round, and then the other player would go first during the second and third rounds, then back to the white player, fourth and fifth, rounding it out with the uh, player playing the black token there. In the new printing, the players simply go back and forth. So you'll be, it'll be the uh, tan and the mint, just going back and forth throughout the rounds. The numbers do stay the same. And then in the original printing as well, on the back of this card was your scoring guide and you would use more of these cubes to help you score, whereas in the new printing, you now get a pad and a pencil to take your score down. So those are the main differences with these components. Here we have the locations that the players are gonna be fighting over. Uh, you'll see that, of course, they are printed uh, portrait style in the original game and uh, landscape in the new one. The symbology, of course, is different. I do want to mention the card quality in the new printing caper is fantastic compared to the original one. And this one was not bad. This was actually very good card quality, but the new cards are linen finished. They are just uh, very good linen. They are incredibly done. So, and of course, like I said, the, the uh, entirely new artwork as well. One thing to note is that the original game and the new one have 
three cities that they share, but the original one has, besides Rome, Paris, and London, that you can shuffle one, you know, one of the three into the deck as you are playing, the original one also had Barcelona, and that is not in the new printing. So yes, there are fewer cards in the new game than in the original printing of It's Mine, so you will not get the Barcelona cards, and you will not have, of course, the matching characters that go into the character deck, and the matching actions that go into the action deck for Barcelona. Everything else is the same. Here we have three characters, uh, the, the same characters in both printings of the game. So you've got the priest that got changed to the saint here across the top. You'll notice that the symbology in the original printing was across the top. It was much larger than it is now. Now it's to be found across the bottom. And it is, for the most part, smaller symbols than in the original one. So for example, this character gets you three coins that we saw over here, three of these. Now that will be displayed right here at the bottom with a three, which will get you three of these coins here. Uh, and then over here we find the same thing here in the bookie there and the bookie there. The color combinations that you are looking for uh, would be found right here in the original, right there in the new one. And like I said, I, uh, I do find the uh, icons becoming smaller, slightly problematic, but mainly the fact that the text is across the bottom is a little less user-friendly, mainly because the other cards that get placed on these could originally just go right there, whereas now they have to go just below the character entirely, otherwise you'll cover up uh, important information. So you'd have to do something like that. Other than that, uh, they are pretty much the same. You'll have to relearn some of the symbology, of course, assuming you're familiar with the original one, but uh, otherwise it really won't matter. But uh, there you go, those are the differences between the characters. And here are the gear cards. As you can see, the uh, text boxes are still across the top. If something gives you money, it now is displayed out as the number you would get, each one getting its own icon before they just wrote a number into it. And if something costs money, that's still in the top corner here with the symbols of what it does right there, victory points and so on. Uh, these two giving you, of course, a symbol in those paintings. And I do have to mention that the new ones have a lot of humor in them. I do like the art style, I like the idea, and I find them to be just funny. They have silly names, they're very humorously done. They also include, in caper here, a book, a standalone little booklet that explains all of the cards in the game, whereas this was to be found originally in the back of the original rule book, all in, in just uh, one uh, single, single book here. So there you go, that was the original book, and the symbols are in here after the regular rules. Now you have the standalone book uh, that they made look like a catalog of sorts for thieves, of course. Very funny, again. Now let's take a look at a couple of things for which there is quite not quite an equivalent in the original printing of It's Mine. We have here uh, three paths that you are given on which you are going to put the location cards. You can choose to use this side, or you can flip them over and use this side. These have a small reminder at the bottom of each just to help you keep all the rules straight. So for example, this one says location max is three thieves. You can have three thieves at a location. This one says you gain a bonus, uh, uh, one investigation point or one, uh, you know, uh, caper point when a thief has three gear cards. And this one reminds you that each thief can only have three pieces of gear. So again, you can choose to play like this or you can flip them over and just put your locations on this side like so. Besides that, you also get these player aid cards for each of the two players. It's going to give you a breakdown of some of the scoring and some of the actions. These are sort of a combination between these tokens here and uh, also you have the discards below that, which was to be found on the original card here that gave you um, the turn order. Your discards would go here for one team, here for the other side, okay? Speaking of teams, the original game was only two players. Well, now there are variants, and you are going to have two players would get this, the three-player variant, 
includes this card here who acts as a snitch uh, with the two masterminds and the way you play with that is um, they are the ones who uh, take the cards and then they assign the cards to these two players the objective of the snitch is to try to have these two players score to get uh, as closely together as possible because at the end of the game the snitch gets their score is equal to the lower of these two scores plus one-sixth the score of the other player. It's a clutchy kind of variant to force the game to play with three, but that's the rules. And then besides that, you also have the ability to play with four people in teams. Again, kind of a strange variant in which the uh, lookouts draw the cards. They give two cards to the opposing masterminds. They'll play one of the two. You have to be careful the masterminds cannot discard a card to take money. You also want to be careful that the mastermind is not forced to discard or they'll score victory points as a bonus. Then the leftover card passes to their matching lookout who continues playing. Again, kind of tricky. A lot of uh, variations and a lot of adaptation in order to make the game play more than two. So there you go. Let me talk a little bit about Caper here. First of all, the production of this game is stellar. The artwork is fantastic. The card quality is incredible. I like the look of the box itself. I like the style in the game. The whole thing is just a, it's a knockout. They did a fantastic job uh, taking the original game, which I thought looked good and had good quality components, and, you know, just upping the game all across the board. So, kudos on that to the company. As far as the content in the game and a couple of the changes they've made, I don't like that the text box in the characters was moved to the bottom, but that's a fairly minor thing. I don't find it that bothersome. Uh, you do get less content in this one and the original one. I'm not super happy about that, but honestly, I don't think you needed four cities that you could mix and match in the original. They give you three here. That's okay. I would not say you are missing key elements in the game if you've never played the original printing of this. What you're getting in here is plenty. I think you're going to have a lot of fun exploring the contents of this edition here. Uh, the other thing I thought was uh, a, a big change, but one that did not really... Um, didn't feel necessary, A, and I don't think really is that engaging, B, is the three-player and four-player variants. Now, I will say, on the side of the box and on the back of the box, it still says two players, has, to, has an asterisk, just to let you know, well, with variants for three and four. So that's a nice way to do that. They did not go ahead and slap on the box two to four players. Because I do find the three-player variant is very strange, it's not really intuitive, it's very much for people who are quite familiar with the game to try something strange and different every now and then. And then again, the four player variant, while not as quirky as the three player, is really not the main way to enjoy this game. This is a two player game, and that's how I think you should approach it. If you uh, find yourself loving it and want to try those variants, fine, give them a shot. But two players is really where it's at here. So overall, again, I'm just thrilled that this is more widely available now. I would recommend wholeheartedly that you go out and get yourself a copy of Caper. Everything pretty much that I've said about its mine, its uh, seal of excellence, everything else carries over to Caper. Uh, if you've uh, not heard of this one before, if for some reason you got this far and still haven't seen that review, definitely go check that out so you see what I'm talking about. But folks, if you're a fan of two-player card games at all, I think you're going to want to get your hands on this. Caper is really, really good stuff. So, thanks for checking this out with me. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.